Hello everyone, welcome to episode 24. Oh, and oopsies, just clicked the wrong wrong button. Um, anyway, welcome back. Last time, um, we explored a bit of the castle, went over a few things that we missed, and now we're ready to move on. Um, we're going to be hitting up the starter zone of the castle. It's, um, it's a rather difficult zone, I will tell you that, but it should be doable. Especially since we're now one-shotting um, most enemies. And yeah, we are almost done with the castle, I would say. At the rate, we're going probably two more episodes. Uh, maybe three. Uh, depending on how slow we go. And in, in case I'm forgetting something, I would say three episodes. Um, I'm not sure if I will complete the castle or not. I want to go down to... Uh, What's it called? Uh, the Weeping Peninsula. I want to go down there and, and clear that out. There's a lot of fun stuff to do uh, in that in that zone. Uh, we should probably, honestly, do it before we go into Stormvale if you want to have the easiest time here. But I mean, <laughs> eventually you're gonna have to pick: Do you want an easy time in the Weeping Peninsula, or do you want an easy time in Stormvale? Either way, you know gonna have to pick one you can't have an easy time in both uh, okay now there's a bunch of enemies here this is not where I wanted to go what am I doing here yeah what am I doing here I want to go here we're all gonna come down here now okay yeah, we want to cross over to the starter zone. Uh, do we one shot these rats? Probably not. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Calm down. You guys attack way too fast. Rune arc, right? They do drop rune arcs. Um, I will explain what those are a bit later, but I do find it funny that they also drop rune arcs in this game. Actually, no, we can have that conversation now. So, um, in the top left over here, if you see my mouse, we have a little slot that's not been filled out. We can fill that with uh, great runes, which are um, things that we'll pick up as we play the game. And if you've heard about them they are like upgrade not upgrades like sources of power right well in in other dark souls games uh they were also there was also like something you could put in in a similar slot and that was um uh humanity or uh, yeah humanity or in um dark souls 3 it was um being embered, which means being human. Um, so basically, uh, it demonstrates a status which you activate with a specific item. Uh, in in Dark Souls Three, it was embers. In Dark Souls One, it was humanity, and it represents like you being alive and you being human. In most games, that would indicate you have more HP. Uh, in your initial HP and it means you can be invaded by NPCs in this game it doesn't mean that you you can be invaded at any point but it it does mean that you um, you're stronger as well if you have something in that slot um, most importantly and whoa do I, is there always a bonfire here or I think this is new what? No way there's been a, a grace here. Absolutely no way. I refuse to believe that. And Ghost Sock is down there. Huh. I refuse to believe there's been a grace here this entire time. There has to be, to be an update. Never knew. Um, well, that changes so many things. Oh, okay, there has... Yeah, because now you can open the main gate. No, okay, there has to be a thing from before. And I just never knew. 
I know they updated a few areas in the game, like very slightly, just tweaked a few rocks here and there, but... And I think they added a bit of, like, extra rooms in some places, just... Maybe not rooms, just like pathways and stuff, just to make the game flow a little bit better, like ever so slightly. Anyway, as I was saying, in other games you had humanity, you had hampers, and that mostly meant... Um, you were stronger, you were in the status of being human, you had more, more max HP. And usually you want to be like that so you can be invaded or you can be... Um, or you can have more HP for the boss. Also you needed to... You needed to also be human to summon players so you know, there was a cost to, to getting help. As you can see, this is why you, I don't want to come here early. Imagine if all these guys took two hits. Um, in this game, however, you have rune arcs, which will activate whenever you have a rune in that slot, and they will give you the effect of that rune until you die. Um, now, why am I talking about this right now? You saw that the rat gave us a rune arc. Well, that's been a trend since Dark Souls, where rats always give you uh, that same sort of item like back in Dark Souls 1 they gave you runes or not runes sorry they give you humanity and people theorize that a few things about it I don't see I don't think many of them made any sense uh, but yeah it's been a common theme in the game that that type of item is given by um, by th by that um, by that enemy oh, we're gonna die here aren't we Okay, that was close. Please give me some Estus back. Okay, a bunch of items. No Estus. Oh, sorry. Estus is the, the Fossil Crimson tier from Dark Souls. I lost a lot of HP coming down here. I think I'm gonna rest in that side of grace. Not bonfire, side of grace. And we will coming over here. I don't think these knights wake up, so we're good. Like the first time I came here, I thought they would, but they do not. Oh, okay, we have a side of grace here. That's perfect. I don't think that dog respawns, so we're all good there. But let's let's take a little look around over there before we come here. But uh, you can see it's a really pretty area. We'll see it in just a bit. Okay, so this is the front area, front gate, and you, sh you saw the, the weather change there in the time. So I think it's supposed to be fixed. Lots of people died here from fighting that lion. That huge beast on did This fella has been working hard. He has some very cool armor. I wonder what he's up to. I wonder what he's doing over here. It's so late. Alright, so that would be the front gate where we come from. And this is the, well, continuation into where we'll lead into the uh, back uh, courtyard that we've seen multiple times. And we ha we've actually seen this, pla this place. If you see that, mm, no, you can't see it from here. We went through a bridge. Um, and we could see all these fellows with with the crossbows and the, the torch pikes. Um, I think it might be better to tackle this area from behind, from behind them, so we don't get hit with the crossbows. They are very deadly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really pretty area, honestly. Like all all these barricades, all you can see they were ready for a siege. Although, I'm not sure why they would be ready for a siege, because I don't think there's anyone sieging them at the moment. Unless they specifically mean us, but I don't think we pose that much of a threat, at least in their eyes. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very atmospheric. All the enemies are dead. We did a good job overall. Um, yeah, that's the front area. Um, I don't think there's anything particular I want to show you. Honestly, um, I've never figured out a strategy to go through here easily if you come here first. I mean, I just ran... Uh, oh, I guess we can grab those items. I just ran to that wall and then went up to get those crossbows. Um, make sure they're cleared out before moving forward. Uh, that, I mean, it, it is a valid option to start over here. I just don't think it's a good idea. Especially for a new player. Get a bunch of ballista bolts and golden runes and you can hear some metal. But I'm not sure where. It might might be like one or two enemies bugged into the ground. Hmm. Oh, that fella's trying to, to sneak. Yeah, I guess sneaking would be a very valid option here. Um, you can try that. Honestly, I'm not a very big fan of sneaking. I like it, but, you know, it's just, it's just a bit too hard in this situation. I don't want to waste that much time. Yeah, let's go. We've appreciated this area enough. Let's go to the side of Grace and carry on to the bridge. But yeah, it, it, the, the whole rat talk that we were talking about, um, it is it is a rather interesting thing that from the first games. Uh, the rats drop the items you need to become human or to power up for one life. Um, because rune arcs and humanity and embers and all those items, they never expired. You could technically use them once and you'd never have to use them again if you didn't die. Now, of course, that's a rather difficult prospect, but I mean, it is what it is, you know. You could have used them like that. Uh, also, we can probably level up, and let's see if this endurance allows us to wear the helmet. I am excited to wear it, but no, oh, still heavy load. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I don't, don't want to do the math for that. I assume it's like a 40, or not 40, uh, 62. We should be able to use it. Yeah, now this gate leads to the bridge. We will go to that bridge later. Trust me, it is there is no point in heading there right now. But we can appreciate this this architecture for a little bit. You can see some of the earth tree engravings on the wall. Again, I'm not entirely sure why they're there. Um I wish I honestly I wish I knew a little bit more of about the lore to explain it to you, or like the symbolism, the level design, because that's something that I love in some playthroughs, especially, um, so, I don't think I've talked about this before, but one of my main inspirations for, for my playthrough is actually, uh, Epic Name Bro, if you remember him, if you watched this Let's Play on Dark Souls 1, if you, if you haven't, I would recommend you do, um, he... He was a very, very, um, uh, I didn't say passionate, yeah, passionate sounds right, um, player, for, or Dark Souls 1 player, and he, he made a playthrough for Dark Souls 1, specifically, he made others for Dark Souls 3, which honestly I don't think he cared as much, um, and I don't think he does any videos anymore, it's been a while since I checked out his channel, or whatever, uh, but I do know his... Uh, Dark Souls Let's Play is still widely regarded as probably the best Let's Play because he's so knowledgeable on the lore and uh, especially not not just like the lore of the game, the level design, the um, the item descriptions, whatever's coming up, the, like he knew it all. And not only that, uh, he. Um, 
he was also like very um knowledgeable about um like the, pr the production of the game so okay, I, th I said that we weren't gonna try to go through here but i guess we could right because we're right here so sure try to make a run for it there's no point in trying to oh yeah Can we go through here? I mean, sort of can, but not really. Oh god, that does even more damage than. Well, we... Jesus. Okay, yeah, we cannot, we cannot clear the upper, the upper rocks. Okay, getting through here. Okay, now you know. How hazardous that bottom side is. We can grab this item. We can grab this item. I mean, I forgot to read the Bolt Drake Talisman. I will read it after I teleport out. Uh, let, me, let me get into this building. Okay, whatever. Can I fast travel? No. Um, anyway, as I was saying, so Epic Nimbo, he was on, uh, wasn't just knowledgeable on game art or, or level design, I mean, the lore. Uh, he was also knowledgeable about the production of the game, so he had some idea of why things are designed the way they are. Like, why is a wall presenting some sort of engraving or decoration uh, that like others did not know? And I find that to be very cool, honestly. Um, it was a major insight to Dark Souls One, um, and yeah, so that's sort of the inspiration that I was trying that I have. But obviously, I don't know enough about this game, and, and honestly, I don't really care to know. But I was hoping to like share a bit of what I do know with people who haven't played the game or just haven't, you know, done as much with it because I have consumed a fair bit of media for Dark Souls 1, so I know a few things. Not not like the most knowledgeable, but I certainly know more than uh, some more casual players, I guess. That would be a good way to put it. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, why did you... Why can you... Whoa! Whoa! How were you able to attack me? I guess I was using too much stamina, so I couldn't do my fourth attack too fast. I got absolutely murdered there. Oh, rip some of our runes, I guess. Ghostak's gonna take them. Yeah, so... Again... I know a bit about the game, I know a bit about Dark Souls and uh, I know a few details which I think are cool to share, like that rat trivia if you've never played anything other than Elden Ring, probably even if you notice that the rats drop uh, rune arcs, you don't know why um, honestly, like, it doesn't make sense they drop rune arcs, to be completely fair, I don't know why they do um, but it, make, it still makes like some sense in the gamey type of way. Like I understand why. Um, but yeah, that, that that's it, I guess. Okay, I mean, we're going to do a bit of damage, but nothing too crazy. Um, okay, so we want to head over there, right? Just we just want at least I just want to check if there's if there's uh, any items we could grab from being up here. 
so I don't lose any HP. Good. This is where the two knights are, like the two banished knights. I don't want to fight them again. So I, I'm just gonna take a peek and see if there's any items we could get. Certainly something to be had over here, right? Let's drop down. Try to be quick. Yeah, there is one item. At the very least. A Narbalist. Okay, yeah, let's take this opportunity to read some of the items we got. So, Bolt Trick Talisman. Uh, okay, it doesn't really do much. Just tells us, same as the other ones, but it boosts lighting damage negation. That's pretty much it. Um, Arbalist, a uh, large crossbow made from composite materials, one of the largest of all bolt firing devices. Its limbs are more pliable than metallic ones, allowing bolts fired from the sermon to pierce even helms forged of steel. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's not really much to do here or to show. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm missing an area, but at the same time, I, f I feel like it's a. Uh, um, some other location, but we won't worry about it. I will say the front area is explored. Let me kill that guy. Whoop. I guess you could jump. Oh, yeah, you could jump from over there, climb over these rocks, and be up here and ready to deal with the crossbows. Or the crossbows, yeah. If you like that is an option. Fair enough. Yeah, and you can even go up there. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, possible. Uh, I don't want to get through there, though. Uh, okay, we're 22 minutes in. Uh, we've cleared the front of Stormvale in what I think it's, it, it, it is its entirety. Um, next episode, we will be tackling uh, the back courtyard. There's a lot there to be to be explored. Um, clear all all that bank area. Um, maybe go down there. Probably to be fair, because I'll make it a longer episode and go down there. I think that's smart. But yeah, this one episode is going to be a bit shorter. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly feel like this was one of my best episodes in terms of talking because I had a lot of fun talking about the rats, talking about, you know, some Dark Souls stuff. Uh, I feel like it was actually an interesting conversation. I was definitely feeling it halfway through the episode that I was being entertaining. I hope that is true and not just my wrong impression. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye bye.